Hi everybody! I'm here with Monday's Math. I hope you're excited as I am to get started with this week's learning. Um, here you will find an explanation of everything you need. Remember, if you're stuck, check the video, send me a message. Um, you can always get some help from me if you message me on Teams. I will respond as soon as I can. Okay? So, this is our math for today. Remember that you can submit it using the class notebook function on Teams if you'd like, or you can just take a picture of it and send it my way. Either way, it's fine with me. Enjoy this math. It's going to be a good week. Hi, grade fours. Happy Monday. All right, let's go through your warm up for today. So, I'm not sure if you remember doing these with me in school, but it's a multiplication table here. So, whatever number this is multiplies this number by that number. And then, or sorry, it multiplies this number here by that number, and the answer, the product, is here. This number is these two numbers. Oh, I just noticed this is definitely a key. What number, no matter what you multiply it by, is the same? Zero. Zero. So anything in this row is going to be zero because it's multiplied by zero. Now, if you know how to do this, you can pause the video and do it and use my um, my explanation as an as kind of uh, checking your answers. But if you don't know how to do this, this is the first one I'm going to give you, but I will give you more. Follow along with me. So whatever this number is and this number is, when we multiply them together, the answer is where they meet. So 2 times something is piggy. 9 times doggy is 90. So doggy is 10, okay, which means that 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 0 is 0. Okay, now I go to my 3 column. Everything here is going to be multiplied by 3. So 3 times 0 is 0. I already know that one. 3 times 2, so I go where 2 and 3 meet, where the fishy is. So 2 and 3 meet together. They follow like this, and they meet in the middle, okay, and it's fishy. So 2 times 3 is 6, so fishy is 6. Puppy is 10, I guess we could have wrote these as we go, and kitty I haven't figured out yet. So to figure, now I, oh snail, so 3 times 9, so I go 3 and 9, and they meet in the middle for snail, so it's 9 times 3, and that's 27, so snail is 27, okay. I could write that right here if I wanted to. And now I need to figure out kitty and penguin. Oh, piggy I already figured out. He's 20, remember? Because 2 times 10 is 20. All right, kitty. So I have clues down here. So something times kitty is 2. So 2 times kitty is 2. So kitty must be 1. Now my dog is in here, and every time I say kitty, he's getting really excited. Um, kitty is 1. So kitty is 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 0 is 0. And 1 times 9 is 9. So penguin is 9. Monkey is 0. So do you see how... That's how a multiplication table works. Now I'm going to put more of these in our Monday uh, mashups, but don't fret. I will always go through them with you. And I would like you to try understanding how these work. So again, the top number and the side number, wherever they meet, you multiply those two together. So 2 times 10, the product is 20. That one's 20. 3 and 0. It doesn't matter where I am. If I go from the top and the bottom, wherever they meet, 3 times 0 is 0, is my answer. 10 times 9, there's my answer. 3 times 9, 27. 1 times 9, 9. So that's all it is. The top number times the side number gives you your product. Okay, now for this next part, this is a little different. We're going to practice our multiplication facts. So right now, I'm going to get you to um, you're, for this part, you're going to pause the video. You're going to look at the time on the clock when you start you're gonna write it down. So the time right now in when I'm filming this is, let's say it's 11.35, okay? Then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna answer all of these as fast, or not, I'm not gonna say as fast as you can, as comfortably as you can. So don't waste time, focus on this the whole time, but it's no, there's no pressure, there's no race. You're just, uh, for your own purposes, you're gonna go through and do that. So you write down the time you start, you do all of your multiplication facts and say them. So you'd go, 
you know, uh, six times two, you could also, if you're like me, pick out the ones that are easy first. So six times two is 12, three times three is nine. And you'd go through and you'd write those down. So you'd go six times two is 12, seven times four is 28, right? And you would write down all the products, saying them out loud, and then you would check the time when you're done. So check the time when you're done. So say that took me five minutes. Don't even worry about how long it takes me. Just look back at the clock and write down this, the stop time. So say I started at 11.35 and I was done at 11.42. So I started at 11.35 and I'm done at 11.42. I would figure out how much time is in between that and that'll tell me my total time. Now this part is tricky. You might just want to, um, if you want to message me your times, if you're stuck figuring out the times, because it's hard for me to do this, uh, this part for everyone at the same time. So you can message me with your times if you really can't figure out how to count up. But what you can do is start at 11.35 and count to 11.42. 11.35, 11.36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So it took me, my total time was seven minutes. Okay, so I want you to try, once you've done this, because counting time is part of math too, I want you to try to do your facts, put your start time before you start, put your finish time as soon as you're finished, start at your start time, and count up to your finish time. Okay, so start at the, the time you start and just count the minutes. If you, if you have a clock handy, that's helpful too. You can count right on the clock. Practice and then tell me how long is in between the two. Now, if you don't know how to do this part, that's fine. Give me your start time. Give me your finish time. I will help you. Eventually, you're going to know how to do this. I promise. Try it. Okay, just try it. You can't be wrong because we're just practicing. There's no pressure. So right now, I am going to go through the rest of the sheet. At the end of this video, I will post a picture of the answers. I'm not going to go through each one individually because this is something that you could very easily check in any other way, but there will be a picture at the very end of this video with all the and all of the products so you can check your work, okay? But the reason I'm not putting it in right now is I want you guys to actually focus on trying to do this instead of just listening to it. So again, write down your start time. Do as much multiplication as you can, write down your finish time, and then try to figure out your total time. But if you just have the start and finish time and mark your facts, that's cool too. All right, on to the next one. So for Monday, we are going to be working on patterning and algebra. So patterning and algebra today. It says, create a pattern that starts at three and multiply by two. So we start at three, okay, three times two is six. 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 24 times 2 is 48, 48 times 2 is 80, 96, 96 times 2, so uh, if you can't think of that off the top of your head, 90 times 2 is 180, 2 times 6 is 12, so 180, 192. Okay, so that's all you have to do. Um, you could keep going with that if you really want to, but I think that's plenty. You can see how it starts small, but if you're multiplying in a pattern, it gets really big really fast because every time it's multiplying. 50 equals something times 5. 50 equals 10 times 5, people. Extend the pattern. 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7. What would come next? Sorry, this is super crooked. Sorry, guys. Five, six, seven. And this is a repeating pattern. It is a pattern that repeats. Number. Okay, I put something stickier underneath, so it should hold my camera on top of the pile of books and balanced on a pen. Whatever. It's working. So hopefully it's less distracting. The video isn't drifting on me. Um, so are the sums equal? So we go 7 plus 6. So double 6 is 12. One more is 13. And 5 plus 8. Okay, so you could, for this one, you could think 5 plus 5 and 3 more, which is also 13. Okay, and if you really want to check that, start at 8 and count up. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See? You know it. 
Now, create a shrinking pattern. Now with a shrinking pattern, you wanna start big. So maybe I start at 200. And I'm gonna, every time my pattern goes down by 50. So 200, 150, 100, 50, zero. Done, that is a shrinking pattern. Whatever you wanna do for your shrinking pattern is perfect. It does not have to be that one. Now we're gonna move on to identifying fractions. Now I've heard from a few friends how much you guys are loving the fractions, which is awesome because that's the direction we are going in. We're gonna work on some fractions as well as our multiplication and division facts, but fractions are gonna to happen too. So today we're going to look at Circle the fraction that is represented by the shaded part. Okay, so what is represented by the shaded part? So what to do that, we have to count. One, the, oh sorry, we have to find our denominator first. So the denominator is the bottom number. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The denominator is the total number of pieces, not just the ones that are shaded, but the total number of pieces, and there's seven. Okay, there's seven pieces. And now we count how many are shaded. One, two, three, four, five. Five sevenths are shaded. Okay, so now we look here. Which one is it? Two sevenths? No, nope. five sevenths. I would circle five sevenths. Okay, now let's look here. I have two pieces total, so my denominator is two, and I have one piece shaded, so it's one half, one out of two. Okay, for the next one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven pieces in total, or my whole is broken up into seven pieces. So now I count the number of shaded pieces. I have one, two, three, four shaded pieces. So it's four sevenths, and I would circle four sevenths. All right, my next one, I have um, how many pieces in total? One, two, three, four. So my whole is split into four pieces, so that number goes on the bottom, that's my denominator. And now I just count how many pieces are shaded. One, two. Two pieces are shaded, so I have two fourths. So I go through, no, one fourth, no. It is two fourths. It also kind of looks like one half, and that's because two fourths and one half are the same. But um, don't get hung up on that. So. Uh, we will get there. Now, this one, how many pieces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces total, and all eight are shaded, so it's eight eighths shaded. Okay, now we go to this one. One, two, three pieces total. I have two of those pieces shaded, so I have two thirds. Now for this one, one, two, three, four, five. I have five pieces total. Now the number shaded is one, two, three pieces are shaded. So it's three fifths. Three fifths. Now my next one, I have one, two, three pieces. And the number shaded, I have one, two of those pieces are shaded. Two thirds. Two thirds. Okay, my next one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces total. So my denominator, my, my, num, my bottom number is eight, and then I have seven of those eight pieces shaded. So now I have seven eighths, I circle seven eighths. For this one, how many pieces all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So my denominator is 12, I have 12, my whole is divided into 12 pieces, and I have two of those pieces are shaded, so it's two twelfths. Okay, my next one, I have one, two, three, four pieces in total. All right, and now I'm gonna count how many shaded. I have one, two shaded. That's two fourths is shaded, two fourths. Okay, now I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six pieces in total. Now on top, I have to figure out how many pieces are shaded. One, two, three, four pieces are shaded. So it's four sixths. Okay, now shade the parts to represent each fraction. 
So for this part, you guys are going to do it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to write out the fraction in numbers just to make sure that it makes sense to you. And then I'm gonna ask you to try and shade them in. I will do one as an example, and then I will, I will ask you guys to do it. So 8 tenths is gonna look, this is what the number looks like, 8 tenths. So there's 10 possible pieces, but only eight are shaded, so watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go, there's eight tenths. This one is two fifths. So you guys would sh shade in, there's five possible pieces, you shade in two. This one is one sixth. There's six possible sh pieces, you would shade in one of those. Three sixths. Okay, this one is one-fourth, this one is two-thirds, and this one is three-fourths, and this one is one-third. Now, you are going to shade this in yourself, and then when you send me a picture, I'll be able to see if you're understanding it. You could also put a note. I've had lots of people tell me how much they love the fractions. Put a note and let me know how it's going. I would also be interested to see your time for this math, okay? You did it! That's it! That's all for math today. I do recommend that if you can, you go and check out a daily 10. That would be very helpful for you to practice your skills in whatever area you are working on. My suggestion is multiplication and division. Um, give yourself a daily 10. You will find the link to that and, ex and an instructional video in today's class post. Okay, have a great day. I will see you on Wednesday for more math.